Hey, I'm Axel Edzardi, and we're at the uh, Grand National Roacher Show, and this is the Suede Palace building. And this building is, uh, have, has been coined the fun house for many reasons. We've got uh, lots of bands, DJing, a pinup contest. The cars that you'll find in the Suede Palace are traditional, meaning uh, they're uh, replications or interpretations of cars that would have been built in the 1940s, 50s, or 60s. Nostalgia is very big right now, and uh, there's a whole resurgence in nostalgia. And uh, the cars you'll see in here are 60s drag, like street drag gassers, uh, nostalgic hot rods, and nostalgic customs. The Suede Palace means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Suede is kind of a fancy name for primer, but what this uh, building means to me is traditional, meaning uh, it's a subculture and a lifestyle. This ain't, uh, for the most part, the majority of people that you see dress in vintage clothing, listen to good old blues music, rock and roll, rockabilly music, 60s surf music. Uh, some of us have vintage furniture, live in old houses, so it's just not something that's uh, you know 50s dress up day for the weekend. It's a whole subculture if you want a lifestyle. The vendors that you see in this building sort of cater to that lifestyle. There's uh, custom culture artists, there's people selling reproduction and vintage clothing, shoes, makeup for the gals that would have been worn in the 50s, the red lipstick and all that kind of stuff. And so it's a whole kind of a subculture. They call this the fun house, like I said, for many reasons. Uh, on Saturday, we have uh, different bands playing, a blues band and a rockabilly band, a surf band. Saturday night, we have the Suede Palace award ceremony. We're our own entity in that we do our own awards. A lot of the car clubs, and there'll be about 30 car clubs here, make our own trophies and hand, hand them out for the club's favorite pick. And there's a lot of camaraderie, there's a lot of fun, a lot of uh, uh, just hanging out. Um, the, afterwards, there's a pinup contest and there's cash given out, you know. And uh, last year, we had um, singer songwriter, multi talented musician, and actor James Infelt headline. And there's probably, if I had to guess, there's probably 2,000 people in here cheering, dancing. And so there's just a lot of atmosphere, a lot of media, a lot of ma magazines taking pictures. So it, it's a big deal. The car clubs in the Suede Palace um, are very important in that they, you know, live this traditional 50s or 40s lifestyle and uh, they build a lot of the cars. None of the cars in this building uh, are trailered. All these cars are driven daily and, um, you know, they, they wear the, the jackets that are reminiscent to the jackets with the old loop stitching, the three-quarter length wool jackets you would have seen in the 50s or early 60s and um, we have probably about two dozen car clubs each year and each year I personally invite them to come out and two cars from each club are chosen to participate and those get exchanged out the following year for two different uh, cars in that car club and um, it just keeps growing there's car clubs that didn't know each other because of different areas or whatever and um, like I said, there's a whole camaraderie, and there, it's, it's, a, it's a huge, important issue to have the car clubs uh, participate in the Suede Palace. Well, it's very important to state that a lot of the people in this building that participate do their homework so much that, um, how are they doing their homework? They read all the little pages, the old Rod and Custom, the old Hot Rod magazines from half a century ago, and then befriend a lot of the original hot rodders and drag racers and dry lakes racers from back then too and do their homework what what type of engines were used what type of nuts and bolts what type of suspension components were used back then some of these cars that are built here there's quite a few that are being debuted this weekend i've heard some original hot rodders state there's nothing on this car that um, i can tell if it's built back in 1949 or 19 99 or 2009 and that's a compliment for the you know the 20 something year old kid that's built these cars so it's extremely important to have the suede palace because this phenomenon started off with a few groups of southern california hot rod kids that were into rockabilly music and the whole music culture and it has exploded to the point where there are businesses um, remaking uh, parts, car parts, there are companies 
reproducing vintage clothing. So there's a whole market for this now. If there wasn't a market, or there wasn't a resurgence or need for nostalgia, and I've stated this a lot, Ford wouldn't have built their retro Mustang, Chevrolet wouldn't build their retro Camaro, Dodge wouldn't be building their retro Challenger or Charger, which is hugely popular and they're selling them like hotcakes. So there's a whole resurgence in nostalgia. It lets the average attendee know that you don't need a quarter of a million dollars to build a car. If you have a little bit of an ingenuity, you've got a neighbor that wants to help, um, the blue collar guy that wants to build some project under their shade tree can build something for a few grand. And it's not just a high dollar um, industry. As many corporations and businesses are building cars for the Amber Award, which is a great thing, the subculture uh, music and car crowd will continue to carry the torch for generations to come so we don't forget history and the hot rods that were built uh, in the 40s and 50s because those pioneers started the way for us to build for generations to come.